Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another special edition of the show. I'm here with Megan Yount. Yount? Yount? Yount. Yount. Yes. Ooh, we just went through this. Okay, so <laughs> Megan Yount uh, over at uh, Patton Valley Vineyards, and uh, she just took me around uh, the vineyards. Um, I'm kind of doing something a little unusual. I don't normally uh, do these things outside. Um, the camera's a little farther away than, than I probably would have because there's a little bit of a slope here. Uh, and you probably can't see the reflection, but you don't ever want to put a camera in front of a window or a mirror, right? Because <laughs> you want to see the camera. But <laughs> but it was too good of a day. Um, it's probably yeah. what? Is it? Is it even? Okay, it's like 40 degrees out now, but you can't even feel Ugh. it. It was like 30-something when I first got here, and I didn't even have this zipped up. So Got the good winter sun. Yeah. We're good. So beautiful weather. And uh, so, Megan, I'm going to have you take, take over, um, introduce yourself, and how did you get to doing something like this? Uh, yeah, so my name's Megan. I'm the assistant winemaker here at Patton Valley. Um, and I sort of made my way from Washington wine country um, near Red Mountain um, through all sorts of routes of more northern Washington to New Zealand to uh, Tasmania to here in the Willamette Valley um, and found my way to now home, Patton Valley, um, in little Gaston, Oregon. Um, and it's just a beautiful site and vineyard and place that I really enjoy working and making wine. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you talked about uh, Tasmania, just to kind of focus on one little area, about how there's a lot of similarities between there and here. You want to talk about that? Yeah, um, that's the most recent overseas uh, harvest that I've done. Um, and it was truly incredible um it was shockingly similar to oregon but also has its its differences and not calling them the same i swear all all of the people in tasmania <laughs> will get so mad um but no it was beautiful um it was cold it was shockingly rainy sometimes um but the wines were amazing. The bubbles were great, which is becoming more and more of a thing that Oregon's doing. Um, I feel like there's a new person making sparkling wine every day. Um, but a lot of the same varietals and a lot of a relatively similar climate. So um, a lot of the things that I learned there, I got to bring back here. Um, and it was just a really beneficial harvest for me. Um, but hopefully there will be some more crossover there in yeah. the future if we continue to make some more bubbles, so. Cool, very nice. Yeah. Um, so kind of tell me about Patton Valley Vineyard and, and the history and how that even came about. Um, so Monty Pitt, one of our owners, um, he still lives on site and um, he has been here with uh, several of the other owners. Um, there's about five now, I believe, but um, he spent some time at Beaufrere as I, as I've been told or believe um, now, but the vineyard here has been here since 95 and just in some small chunks they've been building it um, as the years go on. There's still some relatively young vines down at the um, kind of more easterly side of the vineyard, um, but the entire property is about just under 75 acres um, and over, I guess, what is that? Just about 20... 25 years they've um, planted almost 40 um, to mostly Pinot, um, a little bit of Gamay, and most recently a little bit of Chenin, um, which is really different for the valley. But again, it's one of those things that's slowly starting to get its fingers in, in the Willamette. Um, and it's really fun. It's a fun varietal to work with. Um, I'm slightly partial to South African wines, so... Mm -hmm. For me, it's a it's a it's a fun varietal that I get to play around with a little bit. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of Chenin in, in, in the valley. I mean, I've seen a couple of places doing playing with Gamay. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of cool. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, we're in Pino country. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. Um, and, and I've had, this is what, I got here last Saturday, so I've been here for a while, and I've had a lot of Pinot, I've had a lot of really nice Pinot, and you can get a little bit of Pinot fatigue. Um, yes. So having stuff that's not Pinot, uh, at least occasionally, is just kind of a little palate cleanser almost. <laughs> it is, it is. By the end of harvest, we're all like, oh, this is, this is a not Pinot red wine. This is so interesting. So... Yes, I do understand that. But. Absolutely. Not yeah. saying that, you know, we're, we're going to have Pinot, which is fine. We are. We're going to have all Pinot-related wines. Because but. that's kind of the point of coming out here. Um, so, uh, um, what was, I, I had a thought in my head, and I was going to go somewhere, but then I, I was going to look at the wines real quick to say we're, we're doing all Pinot. Um, but, yeah, anyway, if, if it comes to me, it comes to me. So, uh, happens to me often <laughs> this time of year. So, let's try to talk, talk about... Um, uh, out in the vineyard, uh, you're practicing, well, you're, you're, you're a certified B Corp, and you're working on, are you are live, or you're, you're still working on the live stuff? No, you're working on We the are live. You're live. Um, we're live certified. We're salmon safe. We are um, a B Corp. We are pretty consistently one of the lowest, uh, we have the lowest water usage in the valley um, okay. for in ratio of size to winery and water use, um, which is pretty great because it takes a shocking amount of water to make wine. Um, but you're not just out in the vineyard, like just no, all in the, the winery, yeah. all the cleaning, everything. It's um, it's amazing how much water it takes to make wine. Um, yeah, the whole Jesus thing. It was, yeah, <laughs> it was more impressive than we thought. Um, but. Yeah, so we are live certified, um, which is great, and it's very uh, similar to a lot of the organic requirements, but we are not organic certified yet. That okay. is on my to-do list specifically, and now that harvest is over, I will actually have time to finish that task, I hope, yeah. um, because that would be great. It's it's really just one more thing to put on that list, but it's, it's a nice feeling that you're contributing back in some small way um and just saying we know we're making a luxury beverage but we're trying to do it in a nice or the nicest way that we possibly can for the environment around us i guess okay. so very cool um and then uh we didn't go into the winery but which is fine because a lot of wineries are the same <laughs> It's all the same, and it's and indoors, barrels. and today is an outdoor yeah. kind of day. There's tanks and barrels and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, yes. But you do have uh, you do have a little mixture of things and, and when you're uh, doing fermentation, so kind of talk to me about that. Yeah, we, um, I mean, you've heard that we have uh, Shannon and Gamay. Mm -hmm. um, so we work with some other varietals as well. We bring in some Riesling from um, some vineyards that are not owned by us, Um and then we also have some somewhat volunteer Pinot Gris vines in the vineyard that I told you earlier. Um, yeah. So we do get to make some interesting wines, and that means we get to do some carbonic things. We do um, barrel ferments for most of our whites. We do um, the rosé is a lot of different things that we kind of get to play around with until it all ends up being one in the end um we've got a couple different pet nats so that's uh that ends up being another project that i thankfully have had a little bit of a break in harvest before i've had to start yeah finishing that one up um but yeah it's it's a lot of things it's a lot of um classic red ferments we try to start everything native if we can um just because it's it's doable and it's easy and we like yeah. the things that our vineyard provides to our wines and um so far so good it's worked it's worked till now so um yeah. i don't you, know we won't change till we have to you actually kind of did what i was going to ask you about how many wines you make and you actually just kind of went through effectively what you do so that's yeah. what it was and you said about a dozen give or take we do we make yeah. around a dozen every year sometimes more sometimes less um this year maybe less just because it's been a colder, lower yielding year, um, and I don't know that that will give us as many blending tools for those smaller batch specialty wines. We'll see mm -hmm. 
we'll see what things turn out to be. Um, but in the more recent warmer, high yielding years, we've had just fruit to play with and yeah. things to play with and keep separate and they tasted too good to put into anything else so we've ended up with quite a few wines um over the last few years but um this will be a good year to try to concentrate those maybe yeah so exactly. we've got we've got quite a few things on the list but and then you're telling me about like you have a little bit of a was it chardonnay planted what do you do with we that? do um we have got one row in this entire vineyard of chardonnay um and I don't know which row it is in the drone footage, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't come sneaky find it. It's already picked. Um, but it is uh, just off to our right. Um, it's one row oh, of Chardonnay. It gives us about a quarter ton, um, which isn't a lot to do with to bottle on its own. So we actually make a PTG is what we call it, a pasta gran. Um, but it's more or less a field blend um, that we do carbonic style. Um, it gets some Gamay, it gets some Pinot, it gets the Chardonnay. It, we go and specifically hunt out our um, volunteer Pinot Gris vines and put those in it. Um, and we, yeah, it gets just a little bit of everything and we try to make it a true kind of odd stew of the vineyard. It's like all the odds and ends that don't have a home but they find their way into this really delicious, odd, light, fruity, red wine that shouldn't make sense or be delicious, but it is one of my favorites that we make every year. So Very nice. Yeah. It's, it's right. one of our really fun, odd projects, but I All like right. it. Um, so uh, why don't we go ahead and start getting into a little bit of wine. We can keep talking about some stuff. Yeah. Uh, what do you have up here first? Well, always first at Patton Valley is uh, Rosé. All right. It is more or less our infamous or just regular famous uh, wine. Um, we do a giant drink pink event in the summer every year. Okay. Um, pink is sort of, pink is Patton Valley. We, okay. we love rosé, we make a rosé pet nat. Um, I think this is truly the one wine that we sell out of first every year, okay. um, which is probably true of a lot of rosés across the valley, but it's just since Patton Valley started making rosé, that's been the case. So, um, and they just love it. They're proud of it. They, we don't, until the Shannon have never had enough um, white wine planted here to make a white. So it kind of filled that void for a while okay. and um, it just carried on. Very nice. Uh, so it's Pinot Noir Rosé uh, yes. 18? Yes, this okay. is the 18. Um, and it's really fun. It's We try to keep it classic, light, strawberries, watermelon, all those really um, traditional rosé flavors. Um, nothing too heavy. Don't get me wrong, I love a Tavel Rosé. but Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Don't get me wrong. I've got, I've got oh, many rosés. I've got a catalog in the brain yeah, but right but um the classics are good and that's that's kind of the way we make it here um this year specifically i'm very excited about um we had one ferment that just blew my mind was amazing and so i've kept it separate and i'm hoping i can continue that and we'll do something special with it but all right so um first we didn't get a spit bucket is it kind of spilled oh around? yes go for it sorry right, yeah cool. i figured since we're outside then that's right that would be fine. We'll go off French and spit on the ground. Yeah. I'm trying to spit the bee. Long, long time viewers will know that I have a, a wine episode called <laughs> Wines and Wasps Don't Mix. And uh, um, I'll tell you the story so I don't take up too much time. But it was, it was a funny story. Um, but anyway, uh, um, I know this is probably more because it's screw cap. But it was like as we were washing, I was like look at the little bubbles. And so there isn't, it, this shows more for the screw cap. Right, that you're getting a little bit of bubbles in there, or is there, or is there just a touch of CO2 yeah, that maybe so, got stayed in there? Um, there is a touch more CO2 in probably all of our wines across reds and whites or rosés, okay. um, and that is maybe due to screw cap. Um, 
but also our head winemaker, Derek Einberger, um, he somewhat prefers it that way. He sees it as sort of a freshness keeper. Um, yeah. It's a way to, I don't know, keep it more lively, um, really give it more life initially, um, right out of the bottle, which, I mean, being screw cap as it is, it will have that, but it's, um, that, <laughs> no, no, you're good. They don't get much water this time of year anyway, so, um, yeah, so it's just another added very, very tiny percent of freshness is just more CO2. Okay. Um, yeah, in my experience, like when we're doing blind tastings, um, it, you, you see it more with white wines because it's a little bit easier to see, is um, if there's a little, bit of, a little bit of bubbles in it. Since we know in an exam situation we're not going to get a sparkling wine, then um, if we feel like there's like the tiny bubbles, not like bubbles from pouring, but tiny bubbles in there, then mo- automatically I'm thinking I have a screw cap wine. And then that actually makes the world very small. Yeah. In, in the course of what we're going to normally get for a blind tasting. Like, I wouldn't get a rosé from anywhere. But most likely, if I can see screw cap, then the two main countries I'm thinking is Australia and New Zealand. Especially if it's white wine. Yeah. Um, or uh, I'm thinking Albarino from Spain because they tend to do screw cap a lot. Yeah. So uh, I'm probably not getting Chardonnay from anywhere. I'm probably not, oh, I mean, I could from Australia. Um I mean, you could, but I'm not getting like your 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 stereotypical like California or even Oregon wine. So I am yeah. seeing more screw cap in Oregon, especially with like Pinot Gris and all that kind of stuff. So that's always a consideration for when we're doing our blind tasting, and is it's one maybe indicator, it is. but it's not like a, we're definitely oh, it's definitely gonna be Australia, New Zealand. It could be just someone's being progressive, and so that kind of gets me into I love screw caps. Um, I say it occasionally on, on my show, whether in interviews or in, in reviews. Yes. And I think screw caps are a superior enclosure. I know it's not as sexy and romantic as, as corks, but you don't have the problems with corks. I agree. And hey, if you open enough screw caps, you start to really like that cracking sound. It's, yeah. It's nice. I, I think it's great. So back to this wine. Um, so like on the nose, it it has that freshness and it has all those red fruits to it. But it also, and, and I know it's not because I'm sitting right next to the area where, you know, the tasting room, but it smelled just like I walked into the tasting room. Well, the door was open into the, um, what was that little room off to the side? Is that, is that the that's barrel That's the barrel hall. Yeah. Um, that's where we will age everything. Um, okay. And then kind of transition it right before harvest. And I hope rack. I remember to take some pictures in there before I leave so I can insert them right now. Um, but yes. you, you could have that, you know, when you go into a winery, especially in an area there's a barrel aging or just the winery itself, where the, what I mean by the winery is we're talking like where the tanks are, where the fermentation is happening. Um, you know, you get that smell, you get that aroma, and it, I got that out of the glass. So it could be just like weird ways you smell and how you think of things. Um, you know, I was just like, wow, it smells just like the winery when I walked in, or the barrel area when I walked into the tasting room. Um, or it could be that's what's in there, but... You know, there's also all those really great red fruits, like the really bright, fresh red fruits uh, on the palate. Uh, super refreshing. Um, you know, I know a lot of people say that summer is a rosé time of season, but this is a perfect time. Not because we're sitting out in the sun necessarily, but I mean... It's e- good for all year. Yeah. It rose really is. Rosé every day. Um, yes. I'm a big fan of rosé. Um, I don't drink enough of it because I get seduced by the, you know, other wines. But anytime I have some really good rosé, I, I really enjoy it. For as so, much as I love rosé, I also don't drink enough. Yeah. So. And so seriously, when you're like at, at wineries and, and all that, that, you spit on the ground. I mean, seriously. When you're like in, or in, or in the, I usually, I usually try to find the um, the drain. So I'm not like literally spitting on the concrete because that has to be clean later. But <laughs> that's what you do. You spit on the ground. So if you're going, God, Mark, what are you doing? I'm like, that's what you do. <laughs> yes, yes, I swear. <laughs> we could have spit buckets, but... I kind of forgot. We're outside. And since we are outside, I was kind of like, I'm going to do that. Because I've had a couple of interviews that we didn't have the spit bucket, but we were already into it. And I was like, instead of stopping and starting, I was like, I'll just drink it. But Because you're not getting that much. When it's like two or three wines, it's, it's not going to be. It's not a ton. Yeah, it's not a ton. 
But, but it uh, is still early, so. Yeah, it's still early. <laughs> we'll so keep you drivable. Yeah, well, Saturday I went to like seven wineries, so I made sure I spit all of them, except for the last winery I, I kind of half spit and half didn't. So, because um, I was like, this is last, this is last winery. I'm you gotta have some drunk. fun. Yeah. Yeah. And God knows how many I was gonna, wines I was going to taste, so I had to still like, you know, not swallow all of it. But yes. this wine is super fantastic. Um, you know, and it's fresh, it's vibrant, uh, some really great light red fruits. Um, so yeah, um, this is really delicious. Yeah, I I love our rosé. It's acidic, it's bright, it's zesty, it's all the all those just, zingy things you want from yeah a light rosé. On that last on that last taste there, I was I was getting the the, the brighter assist, brighter acidity, and I think zing is a great way to put it. Um, but even so, even with all, like I said, all that, all that bright fruit and fresh fruit, um, there's still a little bit of, you, you know, it's Pinot and not like other grapes that are necessarily making uh, a rosé. Um, there's, there's a touch of grippiness and earthiness that I find with Pinot rosés more than others. I'm not saying they can't have them, but I just tend to find it with a Pinot rosé more than, um, say a Grenache Syrah, you know, Maved or Cinso Rosé. Cinso for me brings like a completely different characteristic to rosés. Um, and I kind of think Pinot is like the same thing. It kind of brings something different than just Grenache and Syrah and Maved. They, they kind of have a sameness. A lot of rosés from France all have to kind of taste the same. But when you throw in like Cinso or you get a Pinot Rosé, it's kind of like, oh, you kind of take notice. At least I do. Yeah, it's, I, it's hard. Um kind of differentiating them here because in Oregon they're all Pinot Rosés. Yeah, but, right. <laughs> but when you take them out of context and you are putting them among the others, it is very clear um, that there is something specifically different about them and that they do bring something else to the table. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, yeah. so what do we have here on the next four? So this is some more Pinot. Right. Um, this is our estate. Um and that is, in its truest form, just a representation of the entire property. We um, we do make a traditional um, Willamette Valley wine um, that's a little larger volume than the estate um, and that we nationally distribute. But the estate, we try to concentrate down um, in quality and also... Um, we really try to make sure it represents every corner of the property. Okay. Um, we've got a portion um, closer to the west called the West Block um, that gets all the afternoon sun, um, and it has a particular set of clones planted there that just give it this bigger, grippier, earthy ness to it. Okay. Um, and the 10 acre to our left or the east um, is some more pomard, some more um, morning sun, some more elegant things in a way. Um, and everything in between and outside, we try to find a way to marry all of that in this particular bottling. Okay. Um, and so hopefully what it shows is that You've got those nice fruits from Ten Acre. You've got um, maybe a little youth from the young vines. You've got um, structure and tannin from the West Block. Um, and you've got all the edges filled in from all the other little pockets of the vineyard that don't necessarily have a designated home, but they um, are important to making everything complete so okay that's sort of what we try to do with this one one wine so you touched upon you have a willamette valley one and so it has a wider distribution are most of your wines more of a winery only or just small or or, or not a lot of distribution or direct to customer type of thing um not necessarily we uh we have a great National sales guy Mike, yes. who you've met. I met at Pro um, Vine. Yeah, yeah. This is why I'm here because this is my this is my the one place not the one place but the one place where I I visited. I didn't know idea who, who the winery was and I was like I don't know who they are and there are a lot of the other like usual suspects were at Pro Vine. Um, and me yeah, I stopped by there 
by them too. But um, I was like, I don't know who these guys are. Let's check it out. And yeah. I, I like the wine, so that's why. I, that's why when I approached Mike, which the funny story was, I told you that um, this is embarrassing, but uh, after Texom, I, I I sent a lot of emails to people, people I got in cards from, and for some reason, I. I, well, I couldn't remember meeting him at Texom. I was like, maybe met him at Texom. So I was like, hey, nice to see you at Texom. And Mike's like, I must have a doppelganger because we, we met at Provine. I was like, oh, I'm such an idiot. So, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah well, we so, made it so, here yeah, now. Mike, so, so back to Mike, uh, so your national sales guy. Yeah, he uh, he does great uh, distributing for us and representing Patton Valley everywhere and then some um, in and out of the country. Mm-hmm. Um and so we do try to get him kind of a wide variety of our wines because that's a good representation of us yeah. is we don't just make the Willamette Valley Pinot. We make a lot of things, and we want him to have access to those, and we want everyone to have access to them. But there are, like I said, a, some years where we can make some really small bottlings of things, and... Those are not numbers that make it into national sales. They're yeah. they're tasting room only or they're club only, um, and it's not not necessarily because any of those people are more special. Um, club members, you are definitely more special, um, but there's just not the numbers to go right, to every yeah. state. You so, have to make a decision somewhere. So yeah. I mean, if you don't have enough distribution make national distribution then yeah i definitely you know these are gonna be the more special wine so you're gonna give them to the more special people right yeah or um, not give them but more access or you or you come up to the winery or you know? it's an excuse to come find them yourself yes. right exactly and let me tell you um i know i've been peppering the drone footage throughout what we we're talking about the view up here is incredible so um you have an outstanding view when it's a day like today of mount hood like, you actually get to see it's, I'm assuming it's Mount Hood, not, not any other ones. Uh, you be. actually get to see Adams Is and Adams Helens a- over here. Yes. Okay, yeah, I didn't see those, but, like, the big one, that's that's Mount Hood. That, it can't be anything else but that one. Because uh, it's the closest yes. to here. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> anyway, sorry. I tried on the drone to, like, it's, it's, it's so far away. I did the little zoom, which I never use the zoom. And it's, like, a one-and-a-half time zoom. It's not even that great. But um, I try to like zoom in on what the mountain, and so. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna when we get done, I'm gonna try to look for um, Adams and Helens um, because that'd be kind of cool. I hadn't seen those yet. I've seen Jefferson because I was down farther south, and I got to see Jefferson and Hood kind of next to each other. I mean, it had had a wide, unobstructed view. Yeah. But that was over when I was down by Bryn Mawr going over to. I can't remember where I went to next. Uh, I've gone to so many wineries over the last week or two, but but yeah, we've got so a few up here. The bottom line is there's an amazing view up here. You can see all kinds of stuff from the top here. You're sitting at a great, great location, and um, so yeah. Um, so let's get into the wine here. So the the yeah. estate. So the estate. So just like. All Pinots should have. There's 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 a great cherry in here, but I kind of feel it's a little bit darker on the cherry. And we do, we try not to do more than probably 25% new oak in yeah. any of our Pinots. Um, even that is probably a lot, but um, the estate specifically gets a little bit more of that new oak or at least of the bigger, broodier barrels that we use. Okay. Um, just because a lot of our other Pinots are a little on the lighter side, and the estate, for some reason, we find that it it can take it, it can handle yeah. it, um, and, and it turns out to be very dark cherries, dark, yeah. dark fruits, but not necessarily um, overly so, or right. jammy, or too i don't know too syrupy in a way yeah um i'm also getting some really good spice out of this a little cinnamon a little clove and it's super tasty um 
all that comes through on the palate. Um, I think I think on the palate the the oak comes through a little bit more, but it's not like something that's overpowering. You're not like oh my goodness, they use 100% French New Oak, and you're like ugh. Okay, um, I mean it's just a little bit more, but I think the spice characteristics are really coming through to really balance the cherry, um, and it's definitely darker. I even get maybe a little bit of of um, maybe a touch of raspberry, um, but some little bit darker fruits. Um, yesterday I actually had a Marion Berry Pie ice cream scoop and a Huckleberry ice cream Ooh. scoop at Tillamook. Um, you are definitely in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, well, I so th- I wanted to taste, and I had chocolate too, because there you go. I had to have chocolate, but um, <laughs> but so, uh, so I don't eat a lot of Marion Berry or blackberry, more like Pacific Northwest specific blackberry. Um, cause like a cross between blackberry and something else. I looked it up yesterday cause I didn't really know what a Marion berry was. Fair. Uh, I knew it was a blackberry, but I knew, I didn't know why. And then huckleberry. I mean, I, I'm not saying I get those both in here, but a little bit of, a little bit of a darker, maybe like a blackberry fruit, um, type of thing out of this. And definitely a little, a little mintiness too on the aroma. Absolutely delicious. Um, I didn't ask you about price points. Do you know the price points on on these real quick? I or can I get do. Or, or, um, I can definitely get them inside. Um, well, and I can do. That. I mean, it'll be a lower. It'll be on a lower third. It's just a lot of times in the video when I hear the price, I, I don't have to like email or whatever. But um, I can always get them inside too. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am. Oh, I'm so bad at the price points part. But you're not the one selling the wine. <laughs> yeah, I just have to make it. I just have to make it. Um, no, we try, in my opinion, to keep things very affordable. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's the screw capness of it, but I think that our wines are um, deserving of higher prices, but we like to keep them affordable. So I like that you keep them affordable. So I mean, yeah, don't worry about that. I'll 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 um I'll get them when I go inside. Um, not to try to put you yeah. on the spot or anything. No, I, I have no idea. About, I was just thinking about. I don't. I didn't ask about the price points, and I was like, well, I'll ask, but you know, to, I'll get them in there. So they'll be already even the lower thirds anyway. So um, the little things underneath that say what they are. But uh, um, uh, that's just me. That's how just my usual workflow. When Perfect. I do reviews, I say the price. So then I when I go back to edit. I, I know what the price is. There you so, go. That makes sense. Because I don't sense. always have a note off to this. I don't always have a note saying what they are. So that's more for me in editing than anything else. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's really delicious wine. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, the estate we've always made. Um, and it's not that you guys can see them, but... Um, the labels have always oh yeah, yeah probably stayed the labels out there. relatively similar. Um, yeah. you would recognize them if you could. Uh-oh. Hi, Ollie. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Ollie. Hi. Is that the Zen collar? Oh, he does. He's feeling much better too. All right. Hey, 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 hey. You doing all right? Cool. Yeah. Always fun to have um, friends show up. Yeah. <laughs> this is Monty's dog, Ollie. All right. Uh, Monty, our fearless leader. Um, How you doing, Monty? Hi. Yeah. You want to, like, say hi to the camera there real quick? Oh, geez, I didn't take a shower. <laughs> there you go. I'm sorry, you're taping? Yeah, we're, we're recording right now. Oh, yeah. okay. Hello. Yeah. I'm, I'm Mark. I'm Mark. I'm Mark. I'm Monty, obviously. Pleasure I didn't to meet know you were recording, yeah. so I'm Yeah, no, we're good. Um, we're good. I'm, we're, we're, we're two out of three wines so far. We're okay. going to hit the last one here in a second, but okay. I've been enjoying yeah. everything so far. Cool. Yeah. Then I'll be over. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I'm sorry, I didn't know you were coming this morning, so I... And I was on a telephone call. Yeah, was Mike was, Mike let me know, yeah. Okay. But no, we're good. Okay. We're right. absolutely good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, you're good. Yeah, I don't mind having like you know, a little, little special guest pop in occasionally. There you go. Get two of them. Yeah. <laughs> get to meet the whole team. Exactly. Um, yeah, so that was Monty. He's our um, on-site kind of man of the hour. Yeah. See, come on, that crack, it's so nice. It's fine, um, yeah, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, so this is actually 
one of my favorites um, that I'm so glad that we have in the tasting room right now and open. Um, and we don't always make it, but I push for it regularly. Yeah. Um, so this is a 2015 uh, Badensville clonal. Okay. Um, it is all from the West Block. Um, and it being Badensville in the first place, it's going to be all those classic Badensville things. It's going to... Specifically here, it's going to be more earthy. It's um, all of the Vadensville that we have on site is planted in the 10 acre, or I'm so sorry, um, in the West Block. Um, so it gets that evening sun. It gets more tannic, thicker skins. It gets just more ripe and broody. Um, okay. But something about this wine for me is just the definition of brambly. It's cool rugged and it's um i don't know very to me very oregon um so right. i hope you like it um well, i'm excited to try this I'll because i've see seen this you... yeah i've seen this clone used in blends throughout the, the week and a half i've been here and i don't think i've had it on its own so this it rarely really cool. is and uh something about it for me is I'm just partial to it. Maybe it's the combination of the year and the clone, but um, this wine for me, I'm really enjoying right now. So okay. um, hopefully it follows through this morning. So, I mean, there's absolutely a difference between these two wines. Um, it's definitely that earthier or non-fruit um, component comes through way more. Um, I like the description of bramble. I like to use bramble a lot in wines. Um, the estate at the very end, um, I didn't get exactly this much, but there was a touch of, and for lack of a better word, I, I call it stemminess. But mm -hmm. if, like you get a little bit of woodiness. I don't. Uh, we didn't really talk about if you're using whole cluster or a whole bunch or. Um, I guess I guess that's basically the same. Um, so are, on your pinots, are you destemming, not destemming, putting stems in? Blah, we blah. are probably across the winery. Um, we'll use about 15% whole cluster okay. um, scattered throughout ferments. Some are 100%, some are 2%, some are 10%, some are 30 Okay. Um, but in total, you'll probably find about 15% whole cluster okay. um, through the winery. Okay. And if, correct me if I'm wrong, whole cluster means you have everything, whereas whole bunch usually is, I think it's just, it doesn't have the stems. But I forgot. Or the, maybe they're interchangeable. I can't remember between the two. But basically, this, you'll have some stems in there. As far as I know, whole. they're interchangeable. Yeah. Um, it's more just if you're here or in Australia, so, yeah. maybe. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so but, you have a few that you leave, basically, some of, you'll have some of the stems there, then other things which just won't have the stems. Right. Okay. Right. And that just that just brings a different quality to the wine. But um, sometimes I use that term stemminess, not to say that I'm getting literally stems, but there's, there's like, there is a type of wood quality sometimes, and which also I, I associate with bramble. So I think that's just a great way of, of describing that. And I get a little bit of that here. Um, uh, it's still, it's also a darker expression of Pinot. Um, I feel the fruits are even darker, um, a little more intense. It's something I'm very partial to, um, the Eola Amity area mm -hmm. of the valley. Um, I really, really like the wines that come out of there, um, through across many different winemakers um i just find it to be a really interesting ava up here yeah. um and i think for me maybe this is one of the things that hits a few more eola amity-esque boxes okay um on our vineyard than some other things do um not to say that we are the same at all i mean our vineyard's 100 percent laurel wood it's the farthest you can get from the old Amity. Yeah, right. <laughs> we are not similar in any way, but it brings some of those characteristics to me that are, that remind me of that area and have okay. some similarities. Um, 
and that's to say, like, a lot of the wines we make are nothing like the Pinots you'll find in the Dundee Hills, mm -hmm. or um, you'll find some similarities between ours and maybe Chehalem Mountain ABAs, but, um, I, yeah, we're a very out-of-the-box site up here, but yeah. um, you can you can find the similarities, I think, in some things, and I think that's where this hits for me. And I think this, this wine really just, I mean, it just brings something else to the table. Um, you know, when you go to visit a region, there's a lot of wines that have, they should have a, 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 a similarity. I mean, they should taste like the, the general place. Um, but then you get into the specific wineries, and yes, there's differences. So like, these wines definitely don't taste exactly like anything else. And this, um, it's Vaden, how am I, Vaden? Vadensville. Uh, Vadensville. Um, I actually don't ever say that word, so I was like, how do I say I hear it all the time. So this Vadensville clone um, definitely has a uniqueness to it, um, and I think, you know, it's it's really enjoyable. Now, maybe it's because kind of like a couple weeks ago when I was doing a natural wine thing, and someone explained mouse, and they brought a wine that specifically has mouse in it, which I'd never had before, and it's kind of cheesy. I was like, this is kind of cool, but it's like the new toy. <laughs> um, yes. But I... But I don't look at this as that new toy why we get tired of it after like five minutes. Um, I really think this is a really good expression of Pinot and it's a cool thing to try. And um, I think this is something that, you know, if I see this clone either by itself or um, in a blend, which I didn't realize how much Oregon Pinot has this in it. Yeah. Um, it's probably why I like a lot of Oregon Pinot over pretty much all other Pinots. And no disrespect to the Burgundians. I mean, I went there two years ago, and I had a great time, and I actually, quote, got it about Pinot and Chardonnay. Um, but, um, you know, there's just something about Oregon as a category, and we'll lamb it more than anything else, because that's what I see more than anything else, um, is, is Pinot that I really enjoy. So this is excellent great. wine. Thank you. I like it a lot. Um, so I think, I think we've kind of covered everything. Um, do you have anything else you want to talk about? Maybe we talked about while we're doing our tour, or that we maybe didn't bring up. Um, I don't know. I mean, we we hit the wines, we hit the vineyard, we um, talked about how you make the wines. Yeah, we yeah. we try pretty hard to keep things easy, and mellow up yeah. here. Um, it's a beautiful site. It's a it's a very simple winery, um, and we try to let those two things kind of yeah. speak for themselves up here um it's m just me most of the year our head winemaker lives in canada um part-time or well mostly full-time so um just one so person, person just one woman. person doing it uh <laughs> nice. means i rely on rely on the grapes pretty heavily to cool. pull pull their weight yeah. so it works out well i think yeah. we've got a good good thing going up here so and when I pulled up, um, you know, this is definitely one of the wineries that you don't have to make an appointment at. Um, cause nope. it, didn't, it didn't say appointment only on the sign. That was um, during a couple of my other visits in between sessions. I kind of popped in and I didn't realize a couple were appointment only, but I luckily showed up and they were like nothing going on. So I'm not saying you should do that, <laughs> but um, they will be accommodating if there's an appointment only winery and there's nothing going on. Then, yeah. Then they could they could accommodate you. It's really up to them. But I, I went to two of them. They're like, "Come on in, we're good." Oregon's <laughs> friendly. If you yeah. can if you can stand the rain, come in the winter. We're slow yeah. and we need company. Yeah. Those. So. those yeah. So real that's pro tip visiting wineries. I know it's not the most beautiful time of year to show up, um, whether it's here or anywhere else. But when harvest is completely over and fermentation is basically done. And it's super quiet in the in the wine area, so like November to like February ish. Mm -hmm. Those are great times to visit wineries because they can actually give you a lot of extra attention. Um, that's the time they actually to go. want people to show up. Yeah, that's... <laughs> nothing they don't want you to show up at, at all, but that they're 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 uh, more more. It's when you can have our undivided attention. Yeah. They're 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 happier to be able to do that rather than like we want you to show up, but I can't necessarily you know, give you the extra attention. Yeah. Um, so yeah, great time to go. Uh, I've been lucky this, this uh, week or so that I've had some awesome appointments and I've been able to interact with a lot of people and they've been able to take the time. Like you were able to give me a lot of time today and uh, I really appreciate it. Um, you definitely should come up here. The site's beautiful. 
um, yes. and uh, seeing all the birds. So thank goodness we did the drone footage when we did because now there's a ton of birds They're flying around. They're getting a little excited, yeah. Yeah. Um, they They're checked enjoying out, their no wind. Yeah, they checked out the uh, the drone while I was flying it. They, they You might see a shot where they actually flew right in front of the drone, um, which that happens occasionally because I'm invading their territory. Um, or maybe because they know the drone's called Parrot and they're like, what's the other bird literally in the sky? Um, but yeah, uh, Megan, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time. Yeah, me a tour this is great. And uh, tasting me on some incredible wines. And um, yeah, I guess we'll wrap it up. Sounds yeah, good? Yeah, this right. is great. Thanks so much. Thank appreciate you. it. All right, folks, so you can click the links above somewhere over here on the website. I'll have a link below uh, for the winery. And uh, we'll see you again next time.